Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm going to show you a very useful DAX pattern that's been around for years, but is still as relevant today as it was when people started blogging about it close to a decade ago. And that is showing the top ranked product category and value, which is especially useful as you can see here when including that as a tooltip for a visual, giving a little bit of extra added insight into KPIs and performance for a dashboard. I'll also talk a little bit about optimizing your DAX query using DAX Studio. So let's hop into Power BI and get started. So as I mentioned, this works very well on tooltips. If I come over to the ribbon chart here, you can see that as I'm hovering over all of these, I'm given various top product names and values that are showing up into here because I have two measures that are in my tooltip section. And I've sprinkled them in a few of the visuals on the report on this bar chart over here. I have also added those as well to the tooltips well. So it is showing up for all of these sections whenever I'm hovering over any of these categories and the filter is propagating down to the tooltip itself, displaying again that product name and value. Now the measures aren't particularly complicated. If I open up product name, here we are. You can see that I'm calculating the first non-blank for product name where top N for all product names by sales descending. And this function here is particularly important. I actually went through a few iterations of this, looking at a couple of blogs that had been written over the years, but I've determined through using DAX Studio that this is actually the most effective way to retrieve the actual name itself versus Max or a few others. So let me go ahead and open up DAX Studio for us and take a look. And to get to DAX Studio, hopefully you have it installed, but that will show up under your external tools once you've installed that on your computer. So I'm gonna click DAX Studio. And I have three different measures in here that I'm gonna evaluate so we can discuss what is slowest, what's still a bit slower, and then what is most optimized. Now what I have done is I've created a table that iterates this calculation over all of the calendar dates because I want it to calculate over enough rows that we can actually see some processing time occurring both with the storage and the formula engine. But as a reminder, when you're using DAX Studio, everything needs to be wrapped in an evaluate. And there's a couple of things you wanna make sure to have enabled. You want query plan enabled as well as server timing so you can do tracing and recordings to do some performance optimization and tweaking. But I'd also recommend coming over to run and make sure you clear the cache when run so it doesn't cache any of the queries and then runs them in a more optimized form the second or third time you run that. So let's start with the slowest one to begin with. I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna click run and I'm going to come down to the bottom and under results, you can see that it calculates the top product name for every single calendar date. Again, it's doing enough rows now that it's actually gonna be taking some time. If I come over to server timings, where it's taking about 175 milliseconds for the formula engine and about 16 seconds for the storage engine. And it has executed a couple of queries. It is grabbing the sales amount for all my product names in here as one of those queries. It's also grabbing the product name list as well for another one. In the third one, it's grabbing the date table. And then you can see there's one in bold down here at the bottom. Now it's actually doing a couple different things. In general, whenever you see anything in here that is a callback that's being highlighted, what that generally means is that the storage engine has a calculation that it cannot compute. So it is handing information back to the formula engine. Now there's a lot of information I could dive into about callback ID, but in general, it's something you want to try to avoid. One of the reasons they actually bold it in here, just as kind of a warning, is if you can rewrite the code in a way that makes sure that it does not have a callback ID where the storage engine has to hand back data to the formula engine to do some calculations, which generally makes things run slower. If you want more information on this, check out SQL BI, who makes Deck Studio, and they also have a lot of courses available on this. And you can see that this selected value here is actually doing two things, not only, is it grabbing the max, but because selected value looks to see if there's only one value in there, so it's also calculating a count. You can see that that is taking approximately 28 kilobytes for this. You'll notice that these upper three ones will remain consistent in each of these three calculations. So let's go ahead and run the next one. Notice, by the way, now I've gone from selected value to max down in here. And see, we can see that the first three queries are again identical and the same. Now, the query below it it's still doing a callback, but now it is only performing the max and not a count anymore. And we've gone from 28 to 14. So we have now halved that in terms of the actual kilobytes being used. Now it's still a pretty small data set. So the milliseconds overall isn't changing that much, but we can see a reduction at least in the size and the rows that are going down from this. But it still has a highlighted kind of warning of, hey, there's a callback happening from the storage engine to the formula engine. So why don't we go ahead and check out this last one, which in this case, I'm doing the first non-blank, now the one with this is it's essentially asking for the column and an expression. In this case, I don't actually care what the expression is. I just put a one in there that will just put a one for every row of this, but then the calculate itself is filtering to a top N. 
Either way, this calculation right here on all three of these is really just designed to grab the first row based on this top end filter below it. So let's run this one. Look at that, nothing's in bold anymore. Again, the first three are identical. Now we've gone from 28 to 14, now to seven kilobytes. And this does not have a callback ID anymore. So it is now a little bit more optimized and will most likely run the most efficiently when computing this against even larger data sets that I am using in my demo data set here. So we've seen a really good way to just simply take the same calculation, try a few different methods, and just see what the evaluation results come to. And in general, trying to avoid anything that typically does callbacks if possible. Close out of Doc Studio, And then as well for top product value, it's the same calculation, but instead of returning the first non-blank, I'm just simply returning sales, again, for that top product as described in the filter. And those could be concatenated if you want to into a single text string for any of these tooltips. I personally prefer to keep them separate because that way you have text and an actual numerical value that can be displayed separately in here or combined if you want it to. But overall, I find it as a very useful measure to quickly show as a KPI for the, whatever visual you're showing it in and just to help call out top performers. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member. Last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below. So until next time.